Hello and welcome to this lesson for OCR A-Level Physics where we're going to be looking at the topic of motion graphs which is found in the module of forces of motion in the subtopic of motion. So in today's lesson we're going to look and understand how to graph motion. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson we should be able to describe displacement time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs, understand how to calculate values from displacement time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs and then finally calculate different values from displacement time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs. So this looks at the following part of the OCR A-Level Physics specification, 3.1.1 kinematics and we're going to be looking at the graphical representations of the displacement speed, velocity and acceleration, the idea of displacement time graphs where the velocity is the gradient and velocity time graphs where the acceleration is the gradient and the displacement is the area under the graph. So if if an object moves along a straight line, then the journey of an object can be represented by a displacement time graph. So this is a graph that plots the displacement on the vertical axis against the time on the horizontal axis as shown below. Now the speed of an object can be calculated from the gradient of its displacement time graph because we know that the gradient of a, of a line is the change in y over the change in x value. So in this instance it's the change in displacement over the change in time, which is the speed. Now when calculating the gradient, always draw a gradient triangle as it shows the values that you are using from your graph. And your gradient triangle should be as large as possible as the greater the range of values used, the more reliable the result. However, remember, this method can only be used if an object has a constant speed because it will make a straight line the best fit. Now this is an issue if an object is changing speed, because if an object is changing speed, is accelerating or decelerating, well then the line of the displacement time graph will be curving. So if the object is accelerating, its velocity at any time can be determined by drawing a tangent and measuring the gradient of the displacement time graph at that time. So a tangent is a straight line that touches the curve at a point, but if extended, does not cross it at that point. So this graph, which shows the object accelerating, has a tangent drawn at 10 seconds. Now to work out the gradient of a tangent, you draw a gradient triangle on the tangent and then repeat the same calculation as previous. Now please note, this method will work out the instantaneous velocity of the object, which is the velocity of the object at that point in the journey. Now you must also note that the tighter the curve, the higher the rate of change of gradient, so therefore the acceleration will be larger. And if our curve has a decrease in gradient and curves the other way, this actually indicates that the object is carrying out deceleration. So here are the following sections on a displacement time graph and what they show. So this section shows an object moving at constant speed. This section shows an object which is stationary. This section here shows an object which is accelerating and this section here shows an object that is decelerating. Now it's important to note that we can look at velocity in a bit more detail. So the velocity of an object is its speed in a given direction. It is a vector quantity. It is the rate of change in displacement of an object. So therefore velocity is equal to change in displacement over the change in time. And we can represent the direction of our air velocity by either a positive or negative sign. This contrasts to, a sp to speed because speed is a scalar quantity. It's the rate of change of distance travelled of an object, so speed is the change in distance divided by the change in time, and speed does not have a direction, so it must always be a positive value. So we can show how the velocity changes in a journey with a velocity time graph. So here, the velocity is placed on the y-axis and time is placed on the x-axis, as shown below. Now here, the gradient is the change in y over the change in x, which is the change in velocity over the change in time. So this tells us that the gradient of a line in the velocity time graph is the acceleration of the object. So if an object is changing its rate of acceleration, well then the line of velocity time graph will be curving. So if an object is changing its rate of acceleration, its acceleration at any time can be determined by drawing a tangent and measuring the gradient of the velocity time graph at that time. So like we said before, a tangent is a straight line that touches the curve at a point, but if extended does not cross it at that point.
So again, you draw your tangent here. You will then work out the gradient of the triangle of the tra tangent by drawing a gradient triangle on the tangent and then repeating the same calculation as previous. So you can see here an example of a velocity time graph. So you'll see the first section here represents constant acceleration because if a line has a constant gradient upwards, it must be constantly increasing its velocity so the object has a constant acceleration. The blue section is constant velocity, because if the line is flat, then the velocity is not changing, so it means it's maintaining the same velocity. Now it's important to note that an object will only be stationary when there's a flat line along the x-axis, as will have a constant velocity of zero. Now here, in this red section, we can see constant deceleration, because if a line has a constant gradient downwards, it must be constantly decreasing its value, so it has a constant deceleration. Whilst, if a line is below the x-axis, it means that the object has a negative velocity. So a negative in a vector means that the object is travelling in the opposite direction. Now it's important to note that if you just calculate the acceleration of an object with the, with the equation and it's negative, it could either be a deceleration or an acceleration in the opposite direction. So to work out which it is, if it's either deceleration or acceleration in the, in the opposite direction, you must either actually look physically at the object's motion or interpret the velocity time graph. So as you can see here, here are different sections that you could get on your velocity time graph. It's also important to note that the area under the graph is the y-axis times by the x-axis, which in this case is the velocity times by the time. So this will give us an area under our graph of either the displacement or the distance travelled. So for the area under the graph to calculate displacement, you must treat the area under the negative section of the graph as a negative. But if you want to calculate the distance travelled, you must treat the area under the negative section of the graph as a positive. It's also important to note that if the velocity is not linear, then the area under the line can be counted by looking at the number of squares underneath the line if the graph is drawn on squared paper. If it's not, you can calculate the area under the um, line by splitting up the area into different shapes, calculating the areas of the shapes, and then summing the values together. Now, here are the following sections on a velocity time graph and what they show when considering curving lines. So here, we've got an object with constant acceleration. Here, we've got an object with constant velocity. Here, curving upwards, we've got an object increasing its rate of acceleration. And here, we have an object in the purple line decreasing its rate of acceleration. Now, unlike on a speed time graph, the line below, uh, the, the line can be drawn below the x-axis as it indicates the object is moving in opposite directions. So this can be shown in the following situation. So unlike on the speed time graph on the right-hand side, the, tie, the line on the velocity time graph shown on the left can be drawn below the x-axis as it indicates the object is moving in the opposite direction. As mentioned before, speed is a scalar, so it only has a magnitude, and velocity is a vector, so we can represent its direction with a negative value. Now, we can represent how acceleration changes in a journey with an acceleration time graph. An acceleration time graph plots the acceleration on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis, as shown below. Now, in this instance, we can say that a positive acceleration means the object is speeding up. A negative acceleration means the object is slowing down. And if the object has an acceleration of zero, then the object is moving with a constant velocity. So a straight horizontal line will show either uniform acceleration or deceleration. So let's have a look at an example of an acceleration time graph. So this blue section here shows a constant change in acceleration. The red section shows no, no acceleration. And then the purple section shows again a constant change in deceleration. If you want to see a constant acceleration, we can see the green line here because it's staying at the same positive value, whilst the blue line shown here shows constant deceleration because we have a constant negative acceleration. Now, it's important to note that a negative gradient shows that the rate of acceleration is decreasing, whilst a positive gradient shows that the rate of acceleration is increasing. So a curving line will show that the rate of acceleration is changing for the object, and a curving line upwards 
shows that the rate of acceleration is increasing and a curving line downwards shows that the rate of acceleration is decreasing. Now as we mentioned before, the area under the graph can be calculated by the y-axis times by the x-axis, which in this instance is acceleration times by time, which as we know is equal to velocity. So if you want to find the overall change in the velocity on a graph with both acceleration and deceleration, well you must treat the area under the time axis as a negative value. So that brings an end to our lesson on motion graphs today. Hopefully you'll see we've looked at graphical representations of displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration motion. We've looked at displacement time graphs where velocity is the gradient and velocity time graphs where acceleration is the gradient and the displacement is the area under the graph. So, if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to describe displacement time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs. We can understand how to calculate values from displacement time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs. And then finally, we can calculate different values from displacement time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on motion graphs, which is part of the motion subtopic in the module of forces of motion for OCR A-level physics. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.